Hi, Christ the King, it's Susie here, Director of Faith Formation for Christian Education, and welcome to my kitchen. I'm going to walk you through how to make bread for communion, unleavened bread. Um, every year, we, uh, with the First Communion class, will make unleavened bread. It's one of my favorite nights of the year. This year, I'm very sad that I won't be able to do it with your, with your children, um, but instead, you will be able to make this um, at home. So first step, make sure everybody washes their hands. Um, then you are going to need just a few simple ingredients. There's four ingredients. Um, one of them, uh, this is a different um, recipe than we've ever used in the past. Um, normally our communion bread has whole wheat flour and all-purpose flour and Crisco and other things that um, I know a lot of people don't have in their house. So the ingredients for this communion bread, and it's called sweet communion bread, so you shouldn't have a problem eating it at home either, is all-purpose flour, three and a half cups of all-purpose flour, um, a half a cup of brown sugar, um, one teaspoon of baking soda, and a cup and a half of buttermilk. This is the one where people might not have buttermilk. The, th the great thing about buttermilk is that if you don't have actual buttermilk at home, you can take one and a half cups of milk and then a tablespoon and a half, which would be one tablespoon and two teaspoons or six teaspoons, so you don't have to do the converting yourself, of either white vinegar or lemon juice. Put that, put so you'll take, this is buttermilk, but you would take your milk and then you'll add your acid, which is the vinegar or the lemon juice. If you don't have white vinegar and you don't have lemon juice, um, you could use um, apple cider vinegar as well. If you're doing that and souring your milk yourself, you want to add the vinegar and the milk together and let them hang out for about five minutes before you start this recipe. Um, I am using my stand mixer. The pastor friend that I got this um, recipe from suggested using a stand mixer with a hook attachment. If you don't have a stand mixer with a hook attachment, she said that the reason for this is that the brown sugar doesn't really um, incorporate well into the dough doing it by hand. If you um, are going to do it by hand, my suggestion would be mixing the brown sugar and the buttermilk together um, until that uh, brown sugar has a chance to dissolve. So I'm going to switch the camera view and um, so you're going to see, uh, you'll see me from about here to here and you'll see my mixer. So here we go. Your first step is going to be taking the brown sugar, half a cup of brown sugar, and putting it into your mixer. Adding one and a half cups of buttermilk. And you can use your spatula and scrape it all out. Then you're going to add, uh, this is a teaspoon of baking powder. I'm going to just dump it into my three and a half cups of flour. And I'm going to put I bowl up and turn the mixer on. Let it start mixing. And then slowly put the flour into the mixture.
easy. That was pretty quick with my stand mixer. Um, I know you couldn't see inside of the bowl, but it all just came together. I mixed it until um, there was no more dry left in the bowl. So that will, um, that was a couple minutes. Um, it's still a little sticky. This is my first time using the still, so we're gonna see what happens. Um, I actually think I need a little bit more flour. When I went to pull it out with my hands, it's a little sticky, so that might happen with you. So what you'll wanna do is just take a little bit of flour um, and mix it in. You can mix it in by hand. If you didn't have your stand mixer, you're probably still mixing this by hand, but you could mix it all with um, just a rubber spatula in a mixing bowl um, until it comes together, it doesn't stick to the bowl, and it doesn't stick to your hands. So um, just keep adding a little bit at a time and knead it in until it um, comes together in a nice bowl. And I'm sorry you guys can't really see, I'm doing this video by myself. Um, so, that's what you get. So it'll all come together in a bowl, in a ball like this. So you're gonna take this ball and you're gonna separate it into four pieces. So the easiest way to do that is to kind of separate it in what appears to be half and then take that half and make it in and, and separate it in half again. Then you're going to roll it into a ball-ish shape and we're gonna make, if you're using your hands, I would suggest taking any wedding rings off, grown-ups. <laughs> so you're going to make it into a roundish, flat loaf shape. Uh, it's not gonna be perfect. So you're gonna put that, I apparently maybe needed a little bit more flour or maybe my hands are just a little too hot. Maybe a little more flour. And this is just what it's like when I lead class um, making communion bread uh, you're on a Monday night for Chris Ed. You never really know what you're gonna get. Um, so mix it up, knead it together. So when I say knead, pretend this is the table. You're gonna put it down, kind of push like that. Um, get that flour worked in and then make that ball and then you're going to flatten it because remember this is unleavened bread it is going to puff up a little bit in your oven because it has baking soda and it has buttermilk so those are things that um, will give it a little bit of puff um, just like if you can't find yeast now there are a lot of recipes for irish soda bread or beer bread, um, Irish soda bread has, um, it has buttermilk in it and that's what makes it puff up. So this will make it puff up a little bit and then the baking soda will make it puff up. So it's kind of like putting vinegar and baking soda together when you make um, a volcano. It's kind of the same thing. It'll make it puff up a little bit. So you're gonna flatten it down again and you're going to pretend that it's not sticking to my hand and stick it on your um, baking sh sheet. I have um, a special piece of silicone called Silpat. If you don't have that, um, either use uh, wax paper so you have a little easier time cleaning off your pan, or you might want to put some tin foil down because I'm not sure exactly how sticky this bread is going to be. Oh look, once I have the right amount of flour, oh no, it still did it. It won't stick so much to your hand. So you're going to make four loaves. And then if we were doing this for communion at church, I would have the students take a knife and make a cross in the top of the loaf. And when I turn this camera around and show you, they're all different. Um, none of them are the same size, and that's okay. We're all different. So it's going to go into a 350 degree oven for 15 minutes. You'll be able to smell when they're done. They'll have a little golden color to them. So I've washed my hands. I'm taking a um, paring knife 
and I'm going to put a cross in here. You want to cut down a little bit, a little ways. You can kind of peel it back a little bit so it will puff up, hopefully, kind of like an Irish soda bread would. Cut down a little ways. You can see how I have them stuck here on the pan. They're all a little bit different, but that's okay. They're made with love. And I did say wax paper. I didn't mean wax paper. I meant parchment paper. Don't ever stick wax paper in your oven. It'll be a huge mess. So you can use um, a pad like this if you have one, tin foil, or parchment paper. Most people have the other two. Um, I was blessed enough to get this when Alex and I got married. So I have a cross in them. You can see this one I pulled apart. So let's see what happens when it bakes. So an oven of 350 degrees for 15 minutes. So it's like a little longer than 15 minutes. I'd say about 17 for them to come out. Um, they're kind of a lightly golden brown color. Um, they smell a little sweet. They're definitely um, poofier than um, we would necessarily think of unleavened bread. Um, so I hope that you guys enjoy these. Um, once they're cool, you can slice into them. You could use them and have it for breakfast. You could save it and um, make this when you have, if you're going to do dinner church with us on Monday, Thursday, you could make this beforehand and then eat it with your family. Um, you can slice it and toast it for breakfast, or you could use it and make a sandwich for lunch or just snack on it anytime. So um, thank you for joining me. Um, I can't wait to see you guys in person again. Be kind to your families, listen to your parents, do your homework, wash your hands, and be well. Until next time, everybody, bye.